hello good people welcome back to my channel i am currently on lunch break and i wanted to do a q a army q a i'm on i'm at drill i'm on my lunch break i haven't done a military q a in so long and the questions always pile up always and i always like just i save all the questions for a video just a big compilation of frequently asked questions that i get a lot um some of you may or may not know um, I started my YouTube channel really started off years ago when I joined the military um, I don't make as much military content as much I more so like vlog and do lifestyle but I still like to you know have a QA and a once in a while um, so I'm gonna go to my questions so just a background joined the military in 2015 halfway through college um and i've been in ever since i just recently um re-enlisted again so i'm basically in here in the military for a life for not for a lifetime but for the long haul um years ago i kind of like said i would never like re-up and then i ended up re-enlisting for two more years last year and then my contract ends in 2023 and my new contract will start and it's actually for six more years so a lot of people don't know that but i did just like just recently re-enlisted for another six years um i got a bonus for that if you guys want me to go more in details about that i'll do that as well but that's for a completely like another video um what else yeah i'm in the army a lot of people ask me that like it's right here <laughs> um the sergeant in the army and squad leader you know all that fun stuff first question um a very recent question that i didn't even see a lot of these questions i don't see either i get so many comments um like on my filter thing or on my my app i don't see all the comments or it just i just not paying attention to it i guess um but anyway so the first um question is where did i go oh did well first is where did i go for boot camp um i went to basic combat training in uh, uh not augusta I went to basic training in Oklahoma, Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Um, and then, not that they asked, but I, also, I continued my training in um, Missouri, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, for AIT. And then it asked, uh, when do you go home after boot camp? Um, that kind of depends. Uh, right after you get done with basic training, you go straight to uh, AIT. So you don't, you don't go home. <laughs> Um, you don't go home until after AIT and some people go straight to their duty station and uh, I guess they use that leave like at another time but most people will go home for like a, a couple weeks just to get their affairs in order see their family obviously we've been gone for so long so you go and see your family and then um, you pack up and go to your next duty station or your first duty station um, I know you can leave basic training like if it's Thanksgiving or Christmas they go like on a block leave um but i don't know i don't really know a lot about that because i went in the summertime uh a lot of people i get this these comments leave me for basic training good luck guys i'm so glad that i'm not there um basic training was so long ago uh it's not really something i think about anymore but i under it's obviously understanding that i get lots of comments and questions about it because i started my youtube channel or i didn't start my youtube channel off of military but like like i said my youtube channel kind of blew up essentially like my most popular videos are through that um so i'm willing to answer basic training questions but again i've been out of that game for so long i just i don't really know how it works anymore but i can only go based off of my experience even though it was a long time ago um so anyways um someone asked is 88 mike a good mos um another thing if you guys haven't been following me for that long i am an 88 mike um that's been my own my sole mos since i've been in the army so um the question is is 88 mike good for lower educated people <laughs> um i feel like that you're like not giving yourself enough credit because it any mos in the military takes brain power you know um so um i have very 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 intelligent friends um uh, like literally one of my my one of my great friends in ait like she's an attorney and she's 88 mike like she's uh she's i don't know what her um branch is but she's an officer now but i think it's in transportation so it i don't think that has anything to do with it um and then says what 
is 88 is 88 mike a good sorry is 88 mike a job that is hard in the classroom also do you think someone with short sore shoulders <laughs> um and shoulder pains sometimes could be an 88 mike or is it best not to go military with pain in your shoulders um if you have pain in your shoulders i would definitely get that checked out before you get in because the army or the military in general it makes it worse i'm just gonna say that oh uh, uh it is heavy in the classroom especially at first um it's solely in the classroom like you don't drive for like a week i'm pretty sure i think i don't remember it again it could be different now um, but yeah, you're heavy in the classroom. You have tests throughout, um, your entire, um, time. I think it was like eight week, uh, eight week long. Was it six or eight weeks? I don't remember. The, I think it's, sorry, it's either six or eight weeks that AIT was for 88 Mike. Um, but we're, we're in the classroom. We had to study, like I had flashcards. We have like a book. It was a red book when I was in. Um, and we, we studied for that, um, for like tests, um, and quizzes and stuff. So yeah, you, you do like, there's PowerPoints. It's just like a classroom. It's, it's school. So it's not solely just driving. You have to know like the technical things too. So, um, if you're not good with that, I would get you a good battle buddy, um, and get to studying. Also in basic training, it's like that as well. Um, you'll have like a lot of different um, tests that you have to do. I'm pretty sure we did have written tests as well. Yeah, we did have a written test as well. Um, and you have to study for that too. Um, basic training is a lot easier because everything you do is controlled by a drill sergeant. Um, so your drill sergeant sergeants are testing you every day anyway, or they'll like incorporate that into like your daily life. Um, whether that be, um, I don't know. It, it, it's like I can't even explain it like you're getting smoked and you're like yeah anyways it's incorporated into your daily life um, every second of the day so you're you're always learning something and it's just second nature and basic training while while uh, rather like being an AIT it's kind of like more so on your own um, so but yeah like I said get a good battle buddy um, <sighs> Without another question I get are you allowed to shave your legs yes we I mean at least our drill sergeants let us shave our legs like I mean and if you can't I mean it's not that big a deal like okay <laughs> you guys are worried about the wrong things you really are um, I bought razors like you go to the PX they'll take you like on PX runs like every once in a while and you can buy razors there. I'm sure there is a drill sergeant out there that doesn't let their their soldiers do it, but or their trainees do it. Um, we were allowed to. What was basic training like? It was just it was different. It was very different. Some people say basic training is easy. Most people say it was hell. Um, at times it was definitely hell, especially in the beginning. Honestly, reception is worse than basic training. Like, I am always going to stick by that. Reception was hell on earth. I mean, complete, utter hell. Um, it's like that moment, and people say all the time, and you just don't know what they're talking about until you go through it, but you get there... You have like this idea, you've been hyping yourself up this whole time, like just trying to like, um, you, you have this idea in your head of what it's going to be like, you know, and then you finally get there and from what I remember, um, I'm pretty sure I got there pretty, yeah, I got there late at night. You've been traveling all day, but anyway, so, uh, guys, it's like that moment that, <laughs> I held on until like I can't remember how many days it was but I held on for a few days because you're in reception for like a week I was there for like a week I think oh my God. just thinking about it is like triggering but you basically you won't have anything to do all fucking day and you're going through processing you're getting all medical stuff done you're getting all your paperwork done and all you have to do all day is sit there and just you can read your um, book like they give you like study material like your soldier's book um and you can like learn a soldier's creed and stuff there which i think is is good um but literally all you do is sit in the reception hall 
go to chow come back to reception hall go to chow like we have chow three times a day and like that's it you can't sleep like during that you have to sit up straight and like study and you have to be quiet and it's so uh it is my it's it's mental it's mostly mental um so once you realize like for me and a lot of people like describe it when you realize like oh shit i am not going home anytime soon and it's literally they call it week zero not even week one um and you realize oh my god i have nine more weeks of this shit and i'm not going home like i am not going to talk to my family i'm not talking to my friends i'm not going to be where i'm used to like that really and that's all you have to think about all day it, it messes with your mind man so um but basic training you're so busy you just don't really have time to like think about going home i mean you think about it but you're there you're trying to get through it and you know whatever relationships um what any advice on relationships in the army or in the military <sighs> don't have any um no so i know a lot of kids when i'll start with basic training first a lot of people in basic training are fresh out of high school they think they're gonna marry their high school sweetheart or whoever they're with a lot of times it just doesn't happen and i'm just gonna be honest like and as a like an adult i'm almost 30 years i'm almost 30 years old like um sorry my squad leader group chat just went off um, a lot of the time it's not gonna happen it's not gonna work uh, I mean come on like you're 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 about to go probably halfway across the freaking world halfway across the country you're 18 sometimes 17 years old and you the odds are already stacked against you just being young in general and just growing and maturing um, it's just it, it probably it's probably not gonna happen um at a like you're a kid i mean come on you're a kid a lot of people are just and you know it's that they're in that less stage they are dreaming i don't know i don't know how to describe it but a lot of the time those kids and i remember seeing it so many times where if we got like a phone call home they would call their boyfriend of course i called my mom and dad they call their boyfriend understandable of course i'm gonna call my boyfriend if i had one at the time i probably would have called them too um but they get off the phone bawling boohoo crying because their boyfriend broke with them their girlfriend broke up with them whatever um and they just think they have like this fairy tale idea like being a military wife or being a military husband or whatever and like that shit is just like not realistic if you're young and you're 18 you're fresh out of high school um and like i said it's, it's not necessarily like every situation but like 99.9 percent .9 of the of the military population or and just being young in general like your relationship should be the last thing on your mind it should be work focusing on your career trying to get through basic training and then going to where you are next you have so much time and trust me soldiers make plenty of time to find a man and to find a woman when they get to wherever they are going uh, for married people it's really hard like I'm married my husband's in the military I met my husband uh, like two years into my military career maybe like a year and a half or whatever um, but I wasn't like looking for a husband yeah and one thing I've noticed like people in the military who join the military join for a reason a lot of the time um they have come from a really hard background um you know their home life isn't the best um parents aren't the best luckily i for the most part like you know I, obviously like I, everyone has had hardship i've definitely had hardship in my life uh, but not like anywhere near compared to like a lot of people who are in the military so it makes a lot of sense why there's they have so many issues with relationships um so yeah anyways that's kind of my spiel on that but for the younger soldiers get your life together first before you're worried about a relationship um or protect yourself is more more importantly next question what is it like being in a leadership position um so there's definitely a defining moment when you become a leader and you're put into a leadership position because 
when my battle buddy is in his car screaming right now anyways so that it was definitely a, 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 a hard adjustment because I was thrown into it and my platoon sergeant at the time like uh, I guess I don't he he knew I was a new he knew I was a new NCO and he really wanted me to succeed so he threw me right in there like I was convoy uh, commander like literally out like as soon as I became E5 and that was even though I had um, obviously trained to do that and I've been convoy commander before it was always like in a training environment like I wasn't like legit convoy commander like the last time I was a convoy commander like someone was telling me what to do like it was a training exercise and I I obviously led the convoy to point A to point B but like it, it wasn't like legit it was training like I said and like this time like when I became an NCO like bruh I was legit convoy commander like no freaking joke and that was so scary because I had to get my whole platoon or a whole chalk to from point A to point B um, I had to make sure everything was you know have a, ma a strip map I had to make sure to make sure everyone knew where they were going I had to have a convoy brief I had to um, have a staging area for when we left and when we leave, like arrive like uh, make sure the gate knew that we we're coming and all that stuff like that that's um that's very intimidating and it was hard it was a hard adjustment but it was it's quick you have to be quick i mean in the military it's always go 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 and you have to learn on the fly you have to do it quick um so if you really want to be a good leader like challenge yourself put yourself in that position uh, sometimes you're just kind of thrown in it, into it kind of like me where you're kind of like what's the word intimidated and shy about it i don't know if shy is the right word but you guys know what i mean like it's it's um it's intimidating um but once you learn it it's very easy um not easy but it's very um you kind of get comfortable in that role and it's all a learning process um so yeah coming from e4 to e5 i feel like is one of the biggest um learning hurdles you have in the military but it's not impossible um be set a good example for your soldiers don't be that nco because a lot of people wear the rank and they don't uphold the rank and i know myself as a as a private um like you look at your drill sergeant sergeants and you look at other like ncos and you look up to them they're like basically god you know in the army or in the military so um you know be that good role model for your soldiers and for any soldiers like you know always withhold uphold the standards and 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 do the right thing and if you don't want to be our leader just don't be you know get out <laughs> uh, we don't need you um but anyway so yeah that that's definitely being in a leadership position it, it's hard a lot it's hard um but it you get used to it another way it can be really hard is because there's always higher up your ass about stuff they want it done commander first sergeant want things done and they want it done quickly and half the time is dang near impossible to do in such a, a short time period um or do at all really but you kind of just go with the flow once you mature a mature nco just goes with the flow they they just roll with the punches and just charlie mike um it is what it is and you don't stress about it i literally don't stress about my job anymore it's I used to be blowed up. I mean, like, hella fucking blowed about shit um, when I was, like, lower enlisted. I, I just used to be so blowed. I'm like, oh my God, why are we doing this? Why do we have to do this? It's so stupid. And I would be so pissed, and I hated coming to drill. And then it was just, like, a weird defining moment where I just, oh, my God, I don't care. Cool, you want me to do that? Sure. I'll make it happen. Like, you just, it's whatever. How do I feel about the new the army's new AR 670-1? Oh, the new like regulations. <sighs> I knew when they did this, it was going to be interesting because I'll uh, I, I it's interesting to see these females, some of these females walk around looking like the way they do. Um I have to I make so many corrections all the time and I'm just like why? Um, I think it's good that the army is changing and evolving, but like people take advantage of that. And I knew it was it was coming. I knew it was gonna happen. But it's just like, girl, you know you are out of regs. Like you you're you're taking this too far. Um, 
yeah that's all i have to say about that it's just it's it's interesting a lot of people saying oh they're gonna be 88 mics i'm really excited i'm excited for you it's a cool mos that was the end of my questions i hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys